Why is it that some companies get through horrible crises, strong and successful, without losing the trust and confidence of the people who matter to them? And why is it that some companies, some governments, some NGOs, some supranational organizations, some religious denominations, are completely incapable of getting through the crisis well? Why is that? I'm going to pause and ask you to volunteer an answer to that. And we're going to spend the next two hours and 50 minutes exploring those answers. So why is that? I think it would be because some companies work on their reputation in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, when they have a crisis, they answer that maybe they, uh, they have a crisis management mm -hmm. flow, and they mm -hmm. answer in a way that... So some suppose. seem to be ready? For things to go wrong, okay. That you're not always ready for a crisis, they're mm -hmm. always new, so. Right. <laughs> but, um, okay. but maybe they have like, there are some things that you have to do in a crisis, thinking in the long term that maybe will affect you in the moment of the crisis. It's mm -hmm. not good. Right. So, so that you can answer immediately about the things. So and there are some companies that do and others that don't. Okay, good. Why else? Why else? <clears throat> so, you assume already that crisis will come. So if you assume that a crisis will come, one day or another, right? A crisis will come. Yeah. You are ready for that. Then you are more likely to be ready exactly. than if you assume it couldn't possibly happen to us because we're good people. Yes. And in fact, I get brought into circumstances all the time when I ask, why weren't you ready? I said, well, we're good people. This kind of thing doesn't happen to us. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. And I've seen that not only in the United States, but around the world, that people are genuinely surprised when something bad happens to them. And because it never occurred to them that it could happen to them. They were not at all ready. Why else? Why else? Like the tone of their response? Yeah. You know, so how a crisis happens and if the company or the brand responds in a way that they think is the opposite of what they're saying. Or responding right. in a way that resonates with your audience or your customers. Mm -hmm. And they think that that's what they need to do. They can't admit that they did something wrong. They're in complete denial. Denial is actually one of the most common missteps in a crisis. It's just refusing to believe that it is happening. Or even if they believe it, refusing to publicly acknowledge that it's happening. That, that's one of the most common challenges. I'd like to suggest that there's more than that. What else is what, what else haven't we talked about? Talk about it. So they need to talk about it. Good. There's a need to be transparent about something that happened. Good. Here's what I find. When we study crises across forms of organization, across size, across geographies, across cultures, we notice a pattern. And the pattern is there is a rigor, there is a discipline to managing through difficult times. And organizations that follow that rigor tend to come out the other side much better. But all too often in a crisis, organizations that otherwise deploy rigor in every business process they use will make it up when the crisis comes and then be surprised that something didn't work. And we're going to see example after example today of organizations and leaders who are who get credit for being really smart and get credit for being very rigorous in everything they do, but in the crisis deploy none of the rigor that we would otherwise expect from them. So there is a method for getting through a crisis well. And what I'm going to share today is some highlights of that method and the application of that method that you can then take back to your work, to your country, to your institution, and begin to internalize the discipline, begin to socialize the understanding of that discipline for those who matter to you. Let me begin by introducing you to one of the most respected leaders in American business. Does anybody know who this gentleman is? His name is Ken Chennault, and he is the chief executive officer of American Express. He has been for many years. And nine years ago, Fortune magazine 
named him the single most effective leader in American business. And they put his face on the cover of that magazine. Now, Fortune magazine is the most highly regarded business magazine in the United States. It is the magazine for CEOs about CEOs. And every year they profile the best leaders in American business. In 2007, this gentleman was on the cover. Now, they talked to him for hours. And inside the magazine, there were thousands of words from his interview. They also spoke to 12 other CEOs that they also profiled inside the magazine. And each of them had thousands of words of interview inside the magazine. But there was only one sentence that appeared on the cover of the magazine. And that sentence was this. We have to remember that reputations are won or lost in a crisis. Now, as a crisis guy, I wasn't at all surprised by the back end of that. Reputations can be won in a crisis if you manage through them well. But reputations can also be lost in a crisis if we manage through them poorly. But what I was intrigued by, and what I believe the editors of Fortune were sufficiently intrigued by to put this quote on the cover, is the first part. We have to remember. So let me ask, why? Why do we have to remember that reputations are more lost to Okay. Because it affects like the soul of the company. It affects the soul of the company. The alma of the company. Wow, that's cool. That's a great metaphor. Why else? I assume that people are really or they having such a success. They're like so high. Because they're companies like, are really successful. God. They think they're God. They, can they think they're God. Yeah. And then. We have to remember because it's easy to forget. The <laughs> we have to remember because because it is so easy to forget. We have to remember because human beings forget. We have to remember because in the moment of crisis, there's a part of the limbic system in your brain. It is the fight, flight, freeze part of your brain. And it is triggered by threats. And when the amygdala, that part of your limbic system is triggered, it shuts down thinking. We're going to look at examples of who really poorly handled crises. And you'll be tempted to ask, what were they thinking? And the answer is they weren't. They were not thinking. In the moment of crisis, they were not thinking. Because it is really hard to think clearly under stress. One of the elements of readiness is to do the thinking before the crisis so that we have anticipated what can go wrong and anticipated what we will need to do and argued about all of that before our critical thinking shuts down. But the reason we have to remember is because it is so easy to forget that it is precisely at the moment when all eyes are on the leader of the organization, when all eyes are on the president, when all eyes are on the CEO, when all eyes are on the minister of state, when all eyes are on the leader, that is precisely when every human impulse in the leader is to curl into a ball and hide under the desk, or to lash out irrationally or to deny that there's anything wrong at all. But it is precisely in that moment that stakeholders who matter to us are making judgments about us. So one of my themes today is, yes, we have to remember that reputations and all of the other measures of competitive advantage that matter to us are at play in a crisis. We have to remember that. But we also have to remember that whether our reputation goes up and with it all measures of competitive advantage, or our reputation goes down and with it all measures of competitive advantage, is completely within our control. We have control over the outcome of a crisis. But we give up that control, usually in the earliest moments of the crisis, when we forget that we have control. When we forget that it is precisely when everyone is looking at us and expecting us to behave responsibly that we fail to fulfill that very basic expectation. 
everyone in this room and everyone watching here is a steward of our reputation, is a steward of the competitive resources of our organization. And we have to remember, and we have to train our bosses to remember, that it is precisely in the moment of crisis that we have the maximum control over the outcome. But we need to step into that moment with confidence about what to do next. And if we fail to step into that moment with confidence about what to do next, reputation, competitive advantage, and all of the other things that matter to us will plummet predictably.